Solid wood furniture construction has been the benchmark of quality throughout the ages, and that definitely holds true today. Gluing up panels to build furniture is often a task that we've got to do on every project. I'm going to show you some step-by-step, -step, very simple procedures using some basic tools that doesn't require ages of experience and thousands of dollars worth of tools to yield quality results. So let's go through those steps. Let's start by talking about wood selection and clamp up procedures. For gluing up this panel, I just went to the home center and picked up a couple of boards that I picked based on the appearance of the grain. I really like these boards, but they come with some of the problems that can happen when you buy lumber at the home center. This one, for example, has a bad twist to it, and it even has a cup. So I need to go through some techniques and steps before I glue up several of these panels because if I glue up three of them, now I'm going to have a big panel that really is twisted and warped. So let's, we need to break this down into multiple parts and then bring it back together to flatten it out. These two planks came from the same board. They had the same twist that this one has. But what I've done is I've ripped it in half. By reducing the, the width of the parts, I've removed a lot of the curve, and in fact, I've removed almost all the twist. There's less twist in this piece, and this one actually lays almost perfectly flat. But when I bring them together, the edges are not parallel anymore. So now I need to true up that edge. I can do that with a clamp-on tool guide and a straight edge with a, with a skill saw, or with a router, or just make another pass on the table saw. So I took our warped and twisted board, cut it in half, cleaned up the edges, and when I bring it back together, you can see there's virtually no joint line. So I have this one, this board taken care of, and this board, but now I need to bring them together. And I can just treat these edges the same way as I treated the, the joint between the boards. The very first and basic way to glue up a panel is simply apply glue to the edges, place the boards directly on the clamp, and apply pressure holding down the joints to the board to help keep them flush. This will get you one good surface, which is the bottom edge. Unfortunately, if you just put the boards directly on the pipe clamp, the glue and the acids in the wood and the metal will form a reaction and stain the wood. So it's a good idea to apply a piece of painter's tape to the clamp to protect that and keep that from happening. If you want both surfaces really in alignment, we need to go and actually apply some clamping coals to help align all those faces. So let's take a look at how we do that. I've cleaned up all the edges on the table saw, but now when I bring them together, there's still some individual board problems that we've got to deal with. A little twist here, a little cup here. To alleviate that problem, we've created these clamping coals. What they are is just a piece of hardwood with a beveled edge. When I clamp them to the top and bottom of the work surface, and I put them up on some spacers so I have room for a clamp head, and I clamp one side and clamp the other, it's going to pull the top and bottom surfaces flush and smooth. Now that I've taken care of most of the irregularities in the center of the panel, I may still have some problems at the end. I can just take a clamp and apply some pressure, and that will bring those surfaces into alignment. Now that we've gone through the process of putting the, the boards and the clamping coals and shown that we can pull all these surfaces together, we need to actually glue the panel up. To do that, we've, we've got the light duty clamps helping with alignment, but we really need a good pipe clamp or a good bar clamp to provide the real strength and the real pressure at the glue joints. These are relatively inexpensive. You can pick them up at the home center and they do a great job. Let's go through this full glue up from start to finish. The painter's tape will keep the glue from sticking to the coals. That way I can reuse them. Then I'll grab my boards, lay them back out, and I just tip up to the, see the edge that I'm going to apply glue to. I just use my fingers to help keep the glue bottle where I want it and I apply two beads relatively close to the edge because I want to make sure that I don't have any gaps. The glue will help close the gaps and I can lay that back down. And I like to bring the boards together and kind of 
run them back and forth a little bit to kind of start that bond. And I place my coals on top, clamp them just with light pressure. I don't want to provide so much clamping pressure that kind of prevents the clamps that are going to clamp the joints together from actually allowing the joints to come together. And I'm only going to clamp these where I need it. If they're like over here, they're pretty smooth, I don't need one. Now it's time to apply the real pressure. As you can see, it didn't take a lot of clamping pressure and I got squeeze out all the way out here even though I don't have a clamp on it yet. The thing I want to do is I want to make sure my screw is about in the center of the thickness of the board so that I'm getting good pressure and I'm not pressing down or up at the joint line. Here we've glued up four boards, which is three glue joints. That's about as many as I want to do at a time. Trying to do too many, the glue starts to get tacky and it, it could just be a lot of work to try to tackle. It really can be beneficial to glue up two boards and these two boards separately, allow that glue to dry, remove the beaded glue, and then glue those two panels into a larger assembly. Now that I've got all these pipe clamps in place, I can remove the coals and remove these clamps because the pipe clamps are doing all the work. After about an hour, I remove this panel from the clamps and it's ready to have the glue removed. I don't want to apply water with a sponge or a towel to smear the glue all over the wood surface. I want it to start to skim over. That way it'll make it easy to remove in one shot. Also, I don't want to allow it to set overnight before I remove the glue because if I go with my just a household paint scraper to remove the glue, it can actually lift the fibers and leave big divots along that glue joint. Now I'll remove the glue from the other side. Once I've removed the glue, I'm going to set the panel aside and let it cure overnight. Before we start sanding, let's talk about some of the basics of sanding to begin with. I'm going to start on this panel with 80 grit. If your panels are nice and flat or if you're working on a piece of uh, plywood or something, you don't want to start that aggressive. But when you have some irregularities you got to work out, you need to start with a little more aggressive paper. Starting with that 80 grit, I want to work and bring this surface down to here. I want to do that by using the advantage of the cutting action of the sandpaper. I'll keep about two-thirds of the machine on the higher surface and let that sandpaper, as it comes around, cut away that higher edge. I'll not only want to be working the edge, I'll actually move it and bring it back to help feather that transition. I don't want to put too much pressure down on the sander. Let the sander do the work. If I apply too much pressure, I actually reduce the amount of sanding action that's happening and I really cut deep scratches into the wood that are very difficult to remove. I'm going to sand all this down with the 80 grit until I'm happy with the surface. Well, I've been working on this panel, for, this side of the panel, for about 15 minutes with my first, with the 80 grit. The rest of the grits will go much quicker. Just a couple of passes in both directions is really all you need. But I've worked through all my irregularities, and it feels pretty smooth. Just run your hand across it, and if you feel any spots that are a trouble area, work and feather those out. Your, your hand does a really good job at noticing any little imperfections. So once I've gone through the 80 grit on this panel, I can flip it over. You'll see I'm also using a sanding pad. That's going to keep any debris that's on my bench from damaging that surface that I've just sanded and keep the panel from walking around. So now I'll work the other side, flattening it out with the 80 grit. You know, I've done one side of that panel. I probably am well past due for another piece of paper. So I'll put some more 80 grit on there and we'll keep sanding. I've just completed sanding 180 grit. Now I'm ready to trim this panel to size and route any kind of decorative edge treatment. If I would have left this um, with an irregular surface, if I went to route an edge, 
the router could get caught in those surface irregularities and cause some problems. So I'll trim the panel to size, do any kind of sand, kind of routing, and do a final sanding to 220, and I'm ready for most finishing applications. Today we've shown some very simple techniques for gluing up a flat panel just with lumber we bought at the home center. Follow these simple step-by-step -step procedures and you're guaranteed success.